everybody, it's uh, McEwen from McEwen Reviews It, and uh, look who I found. Everybody, Ed, Golficity, Golficity Sarge to most of you. So, we are here at Power of the Golf Ball, and inside there is a place called Cool Clubs in Northfield, Illinois, just outside Chicago. Ed, what's in there? So, we're quickly approaching the 2019 golf season, so what better way to get ready for the season to do a quick little tune-up at the state-of-the-art facility. Beside it being inside in Chicago where it's always snowing and cold, this place is jam-packed with teaching professionals. They don't have but one, but they have two master teaching professionals. We're gonna talk to Olin Stevens, who's the owner of this facility, and we're also gonna talk to the little kicker here, Cool Clubs, a top 100 club fitter. It's jam-packed here, guys. Yeah, we've got um, the club fitting's got a putter setup where they can they can fit you for putters, and obviously they've got every single new iron driver wedge you can imagine here. So we'll talk to Dennis. The other thing that we're going to play around with in here and learn all about are the golf zone simulators, right? Yeah, this simulator isn't anything you guys are used to at home. This isn't your typical bar simulator where the floor doesn't move. It does. It's got adjustable plates. So if you have an uphill lie it's tilting up. If you're downhill line, it's tilting down. But if that wasn't enough for you, in an elevated tee box, if you're elevated, if you're in the rough or you're in the sand, it has spots for that too. It's wild, guys. You're gonna enjoy it. Should be cool. It's cold, Dad. Let's go inside. Let's go inside. Go hit some balls. Okay, here with Dennis, who is the master club fitter for Cool Clubs here in uh, Chicago, Northfield area. Um, so first, what makes you a master club fitter? Well, that can be a nebulous term. It really is what you have to look at, is look at the experience of the fitter to start with. Okay. Um, I've been doing this 30 plus years, so you can call me whatever you wish. The whole idea is to really know what you're doing. Okay. Um, master fitter is a nice title, however, um, be careful when you see titles, okay? Find out experience first. Sure. That's okay. most important. All right. Um, and now what kind of process do you go through um, during a fitting for, for let's say, I'm a, I'm a mid handicapper, I'm around a, a 14 handicap. Mm -hmm. So what kind of process do we go through? When, well, when we first of all, we have a system set up, um, a proprietary software that's been developed by Mark Timms of Cool Clubs that helps us identify shaft weights and flexes as we go through the fitting. But the whole idea is to, to start the individual off, check their equipment out first, see what it is, have them warm up, have them hit some shots, get their equipment baseline on the launch monitor, we use TrackMan. Okay. Um, that gives us an idea of where we're gonna start. Uh, and then of course you interview them to find out what issues they have, if you haven't decided what they are already by watching them swing. And then the whole idea is to just make them better, make their equipment better suited for them. So yeah. you go through, when it comes to irons, you're looking at, at dynamic loft and lie to make sure the equipment is set up properly for the individual's stature, posture, uh, set up at address. Um, okay. And then you wanna look at shaft. You wanna find the shaft that works the best for them based upon speed, load, and timing, tempo. Um, once we get the shaft, then we'll look at head, then we connect them together, look at the numbers, and then compare them with their equipment. Because the whole idea is to better what, they're, what they have in their bag. Okay. Um, typically, you can help a higher handicapper much faster, more significantly than you can a scratch or professional golfer. Yeah, I've heard that. So, so you, don't, you don't necessarily have to, or maybe you do. Do you, do you as, as, a, as a high handicapper, is there a point where, um, that I need a certain level of consistency in my swing to come to you to get fit? Well, obviously you need to make contact with the golf ball. Sure, okay. Uh, which we can determine really very quickly. Uh, most people that come to us have either been referred or they feel that it's time to get fitted for golf clubs because they, they're not sure about their equipment. And the yeah. whole idea is to take the equipment out of the equation once you come to a fitter. And that's exactly what we do. Um, everybody has a consistent swing and I can show it to you relatively easily, I don't mm -hmm. care what your handicap is, is what you are not consistent at is ball striking. That's the difference between you and the guys and the gals on TV. Okay. Um, that's where the performance comes. That is 
equipment driven to a degree, but it really is swing mechanics. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you have to have the right equipment in your hands to be able to get your mechanics to the point where it's more repeatable and the ball striking becomes more consistent. Sure. Um, so okay. any level uh, can come through and get a fitting, especially if their equipment's never has been fitted. Um, so one shouldn't shy away from the fact, well, this is only for good players. It really isn't. Right. We help more high handicappers than low. Yeah. Now you'd mentioned you, you do shafts down to club head. So mm -hmm. talk about the importance of having the correct shaft. In well, your the golf correct clubs. shaft is the has a lot to do. If well, if you don't have a shaft in a golf club, how are you going to swing it, right? <laughs> so it's pretty important, <laughs> right? I mean, that goes yeah. without saying. Yeah. Um, so the whole idea is to make sure that the shaft is compatible with way you swing the golf club and how you load the club. That's critical in how you load it. Okay. Um, so therefore, we want a shaft that will support the load, store the load, release the load, so that at time of impact we multiply the energy we've developed in the golf swing. Based on my unique swing. Right. Right? Correct. So, exactly. So, Everybody's different. So shaft can actually, um, you know, part of it is when it releases so you get some distance out of that. Mm -hmm. The other part of it would be a dispersion. Well, is certainly a dispersion to a degree yeah. because basically if the shaft is too stiff or too weak, depending upon how you swing, that's where you're going to see the dispersion okay. um, and being able to control it. Okay. Um, so that's why we look at our software to help us to give us an idea of where we should start because there's a lot of shafts up here. Yeah. And you only have so many swings in your body. Yeah. So we have to narrow it down very quickly before you even pick up a golf club. Okay. And we do that by having you hit your golf club first, okay. get that baseline, look at our software, and then start narrowing down. Now, it's software, anybody can read it, but you have to know what the software says and how to interpret it. Right. That's right. where the experience of a fitter comes in. Yeah. Okay. So okay. not just anybody, I could show you the software, you could read it, you could look at it, yeah. but you probably wouldn't know where to start. And right. that's where the experience comes right. Now you also do putter fittings mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. So is that the same, you know, you have the breadth of equipment here. Do you have the same sort of options with the, with the Well, putter? you have to understand, I approach putter fitting different than some of my colleagues. I look okay. at more of an analysis as, a, as to a fitting. Okay. Um, I believe that Proper length of the lie is critical in a putter. That's how you set up to it each and every time the same way. Yeah. Um, after that, it's let's, let's look at the fundamentals. Let's look at grip, let's look at ball position, let's look at posture, let's look at with the stance, let's okay. look at the takeaway, yeah. let's look at the stroke, and let's start determining if those need to be tweaked, if they need to be corrected, or if it's just simple fact that, you know, maybe your alignment's off a little bit. Um, okay. I believe that almost any putter will work for the individual if it's the right length of the line, as long as they like the, the look of it and the sound. Because I can probably okay. take almost any putter, look at your stroke, make the corrections that need to be made, because I can guarantee there are some things that need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. Once we get those fixed, I can put any putter in your hands and you'll start making pots. Okay. It's, it, okay. I approach it differently. So now, it's not, not as much maybe data driven as it is technique and kind of. Exactly. One more question. Sure. This is it after this. So Bro. what what would you recommend um, time in between fitting? So if I'm fit this year mm -hmm. for let's say full bag fitting, right? Mm -hmm. um, does that have any sort of expiration date? Should I come back to and say, hey, I'm getting older, I'm getting stronger, I've gotten better. How does that well, I mean, that once, you, once you get fit and we build your golf clubs, I mean, they will last probably as long as you're hitting them well and like them. Yeah. Everybody's tempted by new stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Typically, we'll find if, if I fit you this year and build your golf clubs, um, and obviously next year rolls around, we see all new equipment again, and you're tempted, mm -hmm. um, you can always come in and we can actually try a new driver if you wish compared to yours. Yeah. But even when we do that, uh, probably we'll find very little increase in performance yeah. uh, because you've been fitted and built the correct way. Yeah. And unless something drastically happens to you physically that we need to make it lighter, softer, mm -hmm. usually it doesn't go the other way around unless you're a lot younger. Right. Um, right. And you know, every day that we get older, we tend to deteriorate, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. right? No matter what your age is, yeah. uh, it's something we have to face. So. Um, you are good as long as you are hitting the golf club well and you like them. But anytime you get tempted, 
then it's a very easy process to come in. We can do a very quick fitting if it's just a particular golf club. If you decide not, I want to look at everything, then we'll probably yeah. redo the fitting. But there's a good chance that you won't leave with anything new in your bag right. because if there is something that performs better, it becomes incremental with regard to cost. And is sure. one yard worth another thousand dollars? Well, right. you have to tell me. Right. Uh, right. Um, <laughs> most people don't opt for that direction. Right. So, I mean, it, yeah. once again, um, if, you're, if it's done correctly, and we like to think we do, yeah. um, because we typically don't have returners um, for fear of equipment not working or not working at all. Sure. Um, so you come back when you're comfortable in doing it. But I'd say five years is a good benchmark to think of looking at new equipment, okay. unless you just have to have something new and shiny. All right. Then it could be short. Yeah. Never hurts. No, 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 no. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thanks for your Thanks time, Thanks for coming guys. in, guys. Cool clubs. You're in Northfield. You have other locations across the country as well? We have oh, roughly 10, 15 across the country and another 10 or 15 okay. internationally. All we're, right, so you can head to the website. And yeah, yeah, we're, take your we're a global company. Oh, wow, great. Yeah, we've got them all go. over. Yeah, thanks. We're 90% built out. I got a Trackman Bay over in the northeast corner. I got three Foresight Bays. Uh, some of the pros had used a uh, what they another piece of technology called the Foresight mm -hmm. over in the southwest corner, mm -hmm. and then we had a bunch of uh, non-technological bays where you can just kind of groove your your swing, right? Yeah. So everything was just hitting into nets with hitting into nets with the with launch monitors. Absolutely, roughly four years ago. Right? Roughly four years ago, yeah. and one of uh, the uh, higher ups from Golf Zone and, and their then liaison that they had hired for this area knocks on the door. So I'm teaching, I'm in the middle of it, and it's one of those things where, sure, I'll give you five minutes type of thing, just to be you know, polite, mm -hmm. polite, courteous, that yeah. type of thing. So I let them do their spiel, and I said, guys, two things for you. One, I've never heard of golf zone before. And two, um, I'm almost built out here. I'm ready to get, get things going and you know start to grow the game, make some money, get people involved, all the, all the good stuff, right, that right. entails with a business. And they laughed, of course, and they're like, well, we appreciate that. And they said, um, well, do you go down to the PGA Merchandise Show? And I said, yeah, I go down every year. Well, would you be willing to meet with our CEO and some of his lieutenants, you know, because they're a South Korean-based company right outside of Seoul. <clears throat> and I said, sure. I, I go down for two days every year. I do eight to ten meetings. I got a couple of luncheons that I do, and then I'm back. So I go down there, and like I said, we're almost built out here. It's January of 16 now. And I'm just waiting kind of for the final touches. So I go down and there's probably 50, 60 people gathered around one of the uh, vision simulators okay. down there. And they had hired a web.com guy to kind of do the, you know, the whole examples, yeah. demonstrations, that type so of thing. So they wanted a guy who could hit They wanted a guy, shots absolutely. That, they know. wanted somebody with control. Yeah. So they hired a, 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 you know, a professional tour player. And, you know, I'm watching him. Oh, yeah, yeah, there's no doubt. And I'm watching him hit shots and, you know, I'm like, okay, yeah, mm -hmm. I've, I've, I've seen all this. Then he starts demonstrating the sensitivity of the short game. Now, historically, short game has not been the highest quality when it comes to mm -hmm. golf simulation. Trackman and, still suffers it, right? And it still suffers yeah. with, with that kind of thing and also the, the time delay, the ball flight, that kind of thing, right? So there is a, um, you know, the thing with putting on a golf simulator is, is basically if you were to set up to a ball and close your eyes and I said to you, can you putt the ball 30 feet? That's how you putt in a golf simulator because you can see the green, but the depth perception perspective of it is off. It's, you have to use different uh, yeah, I mean, parts of the brain there. Unless you've yeah. grown up playing the Tiger Woods video games with seeing the lines going, okay, Absolutely. the green's going down that way. Yes, that, and that's, that's, what, that's, that's what it is. So everybody always comes in and they're like, oh, I don't like the short game on these, or oh, your machine's broken. I love that one, that's my favorite <laughs> one. Your machine's broken, I hit my drive this far, my seven iron goes this far type of thing. So. I'm down there and I'm watching this guy and he, you know, he gets up to the putt and he goes, I'm going to miss this one, I think it was a seven or eight footer, I'm going to miss this one two inches to the left. He rolls it two inches to the left. He goes, I'm going to roll this one over the right edge of the cup. Right over, lips This is out. on the golf zone. At the this PGA is on the golf zone at the PGA show yeah. 2016. He goes, I'm going to knock this one dead center. Boom. I'm like, hmm, okay. Then he goes to one of the live holes in the practice, you know, the piece of it. And he's hitting like 50 yard pitch shots. So I'm, I'm starting to gain interest, and then he got, starts to get into the moving plate on how you can practice, because here's the thing, you know, we're in the north, and seven months out of the year, it's just bad weather. We, we, we deal with suboptimal weather, that's just how it is. Yeah. So we are inside, 
Just like when you're on a driving range. Well, nobody pours concrete that's not flat. So you're constantly practicing off of a flat lie. Exactly. Until you get to the golf course and you get off the tee and then nothing, nothing's flat. There's, there's always subtleties. Yeah. So you can move this thing, I mean the plate moves ball below the feet, above the feet, downhill lie, uphill lie, and you can do it on purpose. And then when you go to the golf course, the plate moves automatically to the terrain of the golf course. So it's all pre-programmed in. It's all no matter what the course is. Yes. You you hit that thing up on a hill and you're standing on the simulator with your one foot up and then you're exactly, trying to keep your balance. That's exactly what it is. Anybody that knows Pebble Beach or if you played Pebble Beach, it's a dog leg right number one, par four, and the undulation goes down from left to right. So if you knock the ball down the fairway, that plate's going to rise and it's going to tilt this way to where the ball's that's below insane. your feet. And it's it's a game changer, right? So I mean, all this stuff is intriguing to me, and then I find out that. Kids have been doing it now for years with uh, computer games, video games on their phones where I can interact with you on, you know, Fortnite or whatever it is now going on, right? Yeah. yeah. And we can play the same game. Well, you can do that with golf simulation also. Wherever there's a vision at, I can set up a league or I can set up a tournament and I can set up all the same conditions and the four of us could be in four different states and play the same tournament at the same time if we want to. Or wow. you could go in at midnight tonight or I could come in tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock and I could play, but here's the cool thing. If you went in last night and played your round, I can interact with your round, with mine, and I'll for shot for shot. So it's gonna see my ball, Chris's ball, your ball, and it's almost as if we're playing a four And Together, right there at that time. Right. So you're getting now so not only are you getting that simulated round where you're you're getting to play, but now you're getting that mental game where okay, you think you hit a nice drive, here comes Olin driving power at 30 yards past me, oh, God, what am I supposed to do with that? Yeah, absolutely. And it's a, because uh, it's one of the things that we're trying to get going for this fall. You know, it's taken us a couple of years to get you know, a lot of these things going, but we want to do the junior leagues. We want to do, you know, the, 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 the adult leagues type of thing, because mm -hmm. it's something that's already done in the few months out of the year anyway, sure. with, with the summer break for school or, or you know, just because we can get outside, but we can do it in a fraction of the time. Absolutely. So I'm down there and I'm watching this guy and I'm going through here and it's literally like 20 minutes and I call uh, my, uh, my business manager who's on my business committee. His name's Andrew Cohn. He's been with me now for years. And I go, I'm going to come home and make a lot of people mad. Because <laughs> I've got investors. I've got people involved here, right? right. So I mean, we've, we've invested time and money to get this technology. And he goes, what do you mean? I go, I'm down here and I'm telling you right now, I'm kind of nexting this to see what's coming. And this is, this is what's coming. Well, this is before they had won any awards. So there was a lot of pushback from you know, some of the people in my circle as to, oh my gosh, I mean, you're gonna do what? You're gonna come home and sell this for you know, 40 cents on the dollar type of thing? Yeah. yeah, so I did. I came home, I sold the track man, sold the foresights to just surrounding professionals that you know, have a, a version of this going on. So you legit got rid of everything. You didn't, everything. Just, take, you didn't just take one in to try it out. No. You, were, you, you were both feet in, jumping yep. in, ready to go. Yep. Okay. And there was, the, there was, there was pushback and then it, about eight, ten months, and then they won the award the first time. And then, of course, I'm floating at that point in the game because I'm like, yeah, we saw this like ten months ago. Time. This, <laughs> this, told you guys. <laughs> this is what I'm talking about right here. And but but it's it's one of those things to where you know, for me, you know, as soon as I uh, uh, you know made it through the uh, master professional program, the first question the panel asked me was, all right, what are you going to do with this? I'm like, well, what do you mean what I'm going to do with it? He's like, well, you know, it's, it's up to us to grow the game. What are you going to do? And I go, well, the big thing for me is I want to give people control because you have fun with something that you control. You know, nobody likes to go play golf and stink it up and top the ball and mm -hmm. knock it in the water 24-7. That doesn't bring you back. That doesn't go, man, i got to get back here tomorrow and do this. <laughs> That's, oh, my God, why do I do this? Right. I'm quitting. You know, that type of thing. This, you know, these machines, they make things realistic. They give you measurable feedback, and it's a year-round thing. You know, slowly we're moving into a stage now to where it's not, oh, it's cold, I go inside, oh, it's hot, I go outside type of thing. It's, well, if I'm going to go invest time and money into a driving range, I want to make sure that what I'm doing makes sense. You know, it, mm -hmm. it, is it the swing plane, is it the face angle that, you know, that I'm the, op, you know, the optimal one for me that I'm working on type of thing. Yeah. Perfect. Let's, uh, let's go take a look at the facility and see what you got here. Perfect. Sounds good? Yep. Right, let's go. Now it's time to have a little fun and play with this, uh, this golf zone simulator. So, Pebble Beach is behind us, hole number one. Ed has honors. We're yeah. going to see uh, what this thing can do. We've been told that this will move, where we're standing will move, to reflect the real life uh, lie of our golf ball. So, um, good. 
Good luck, sir. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so around. much. All right. See so you at Highlight of Fly, guys. Let's go. Let's go. So they've got a little spot over here. And we're gonna put it in the rough. This right here is sand, actually. That's pretty cool. So different lies that we have, uh, different ways to play it. Okay, what are we looking at? there was on purpose you know as a so what I didn't take into account because the simulator floor moves yeah it raised up but you can actually see it's down at an angle here so it's going a little bit from my right to my left down which is gonna push the ball to the right I should have aimed further left I should have been aiming towards the bunkers over here instead I aimed at the green over there lesson learned next level simulators here guys So we went through, a played a couple of holes. It's not pretty. No. But no. Um, the important part is that um, I was four strokes better. So really, that's what, that's what. Yeah. I mean, but this thing is amazing. So, I mean, the floor moving, so I played on, well, Ed learned the hard way. Yeah, um, yeah, it's um, important. You want to pay attention to that lie because after I hit the fairway on my first shot, it was sloping to the right and I didn't care, didn't think about it and I put straight out of bounds, hence the uh, the snowman in the 10, but you know, whatever, I'm not upset about it at all. But then I played through a couple bunkers and in, in the rough, a, uh, a, feet, a ball below my feet, ball above my feet and an uphill lie, so it's pretty fun. And they've got, what's really neat too is They've got different, you know, if the ball's in the sand, you have a spot for the ball in the sand. So it's like, it's as real as you can get without being outdoors and playing. So uh, lots and lots of fun. Well, that's a wrap from uh, Power of the Golf Ball and uh, Cool Clubs here. That's, uh, this place is amazing. And, and I mean, I would, if you're in the Chicagoland area, jump on Google Maps and find it. Um, it's about a half hour, 25 minutes from the city. Um, so it's a real nice spot to get up to uh, in the North Burbs here. And uh, you wouldn't really know where it was um, unless you probably look on a map and, and figure it out because it's, it's in this industrial complex and it wouldn't really, doesn't scream golf necessarily. But uh, this place is cool. And they've got basically anything you, you could possibly imagine. You want to get fitted, you can get fitted. You want to learn, there are tons of teachers. Um, and, uh, and if you just want to play some golf, they've got you know, a row of simulators that, I mean, they are, these aren't just simulators. This isn't a track man and a television. This is, this is the state of the art uh, technology that they've yeah. got in this place. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you know, for the rate, it's about $50 for an hour for this, for the bay, and then $15 for each addi additional person. So you split that amongst your buddies. Uh, you know, the, the rates exactly will be on their website, but you can't match it anywhere else, especially in the North Burbs where the weather isn't always to our favor. This is definitely a place worth checking out. Yeah, so that's it. Thanks to uh, Dennis the Cool Clubs. Thanks to Olin um, for, uh, for getting, us, getting us in here. And um, yeah, good times, man. Absolutely. Good to see you. Thank so you can reviews. reviews it. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.